you'll need a pencil and paper. We're going to find all the critical points of this given function here. We're not going to classify them, although you could. For that, you'd find second partial derivatives and plug them into the right formula, uh, evaluating them at the critical points. But we're going to focus just on finding the critical points. So take a moment and find your partial derivatives. There's the partial derivative with respect to x. And there's the partial derivative with respect to y. So we want to find all values of x and y for which both of these partial derivatives are equal to 0. If you look at each of these partial derivatives, you see you've got 3 minus 15, 3. It, it'll be convenient to just factor that 3 out and be left with x squared plus y squared minus 5. So the only way that partial derivative with respect to x can be 0 is if x squared plus y squared minus 5 is equal to 0. And we can do a similar thing for the partial derivative with respect to y. Factor out a 3. The only way that partial derivative can be 0 is if y squared plus 2xy minus 5 is equal to 0. And we want to find all values x and y for which both of these equations are true. Now, if you have access to some graphing software, you could just graph each of these implicit equations and see. Let's take a moment and do that. So here I've graphed each of those uh, implicit equations using Desmos. And you can look. You see that these two curves intersect. It looks like you've got uh, 0 and 2, 2 and 1, 0 and minus 2, minus 2 and minus 1. But of course, if you don't have graphing software, uh, you want to be able to work this out algebraically, not graphically. And that can be tricky because these are not, this is not two linear equations. Linear equations are rather easy to solve. These are two nonlinear equations and sometimes it's just tricky. So maybe what we'll try to do is we'll try to isolate y squared. We'll get y squared is 5 minus x squared. And so then you could say, okay, y is square root of 5 minus x squared. But remember, we have to be careful. We have to take the plus or minus. If y is plus or minus square root of 5 minus y squared, then this partial derivative will be 0. That equation will be satisfied. So now in each case, y equals plus square root of 5 minus y, uh, square root of 5 minus x squared, and y equals minus the square root of 5 minus x squared. We're going to look at each of those cases and see what they mean when we plug them in to the partial derivative uh, for y. So let's start. y squared would be 5 minus x squared. And then we'll have plus 2x. And y is the square root of 5 minus x squared minus 5 is equal to 0. Here we have plus 5 minus 5. So this simplifies. Oh, and look, each of these terms here has an x in them. So we can factor out an x, and we'll be left with 2 square root of 5 minus x squared minus x is equal to 0. So for what values of x is this relationship true? Well, it's certainly true when x is equal to 0 because of this factor of x here. And when x is equal to 0, you can plug that in for x here, and you find y is equal to root 5. So then 0 root 5, when x is 0, y is root 5, both partial derivatives will be 0. This is a critical point. But this relationship will also be true if x is equal to 2 times the square root of 5 minus x squared. And now it's getting complicated, isn't it? Now we have to try to solve this for x. And so you might do it by squaring both sides, and that's indeed what we'll do. We have to be careful, though, to remember that because we're working under the assumption that y is the plus 
the positive square root of 5 minus x squared, this quantity here is positive. And so the value x we're going to get here is also going to be positive. That'll become clear, made hopefully more clear in a moment. So if we square both sides of this, we'll get x squared is 4 times 5 minus x squared. And this can be rearranged as 5x squared is equal to 20. In other words, x squared is 4. Now, if we're not careful, we might say x is, oops, we might say x is plus or minus 2 for x squared to be 4. But remember, we've already observed that x has to be positive. And if you, if you don't like that, you could indeed check that x equal to minus 2 will not make f sub y equal to 0. So this gives us x is equal to plus 2. When x is equal to plus 2, we can plug that in into the expression for y here. And we'll, we would get y is equal to 1. That's another critical point. OK. So far, we have 2. But now we have to consider the case when y is the negative square root of 5 minus x squared. And so then we will, uh, y squared will be, again, 5 minus x squared. When we and now when we replace this y with minus square root of 5 minus x squared, we'll get minus 2x square root of 5 minus x squared minus 5 is equal to 0. Let me divide this up here. OK, and so here again we have plus 5 minus 5, and we'll be left with, and we, again we have a factor of x. In fact, we can factor it a minus x, and we'll be left with x plus 2 square root of 5 minus x squared is equal to 0. So when will this relationship be true? For what values of x? Well, again, when x is equal to 0, it'll be true. And then plugging that in here, we'll give y equals negative root 5. So 0, negative root 5 is another critical point. Okay. But now we need to also consider what if x is minus 2 square root of 5 minus x squared. Okay. So notice now that this quantity is negative. Again, if you square both sides, you'll get x squared is 4 times 5 minus x squared. And that will give x squared, after you simplify, x squared will be 4, just like before. But now, we're going to take a, the negative value for x. And again, if this is confusing, you can follow the steps to try to solve for x. But it's always good practice to go back and make sure that uh, the values you find actually do make both partial derivatives equal to 0. It might be tempting at this stage to conclude that you get a plus 2 out of this, but that actually is not going to work. You can check. And so now we get another critical point out of this. When x is minus 2, uh, plug that into the expression for y, and you'll get y is minus 1, that's another critical point. So we have four of them. I'm going to take a moment to look at the picture in Desmos again. I think before I said this point was 0, 2. It, it's obviously not. That was my mistake. This is 0 root 5, 0 minus root 5, 2, 1, minus 2, minus 1. Now let's look at the actual surface. So this is the three-dimensional surface, but we're looking at it from above. And we see those red curves are the, are the contour lines. Now if I rotate this around, <laughs> you can see 
that the surface has, well, let's see, look at where those red curves intersect. They intersect at a local max, even though we didn't actually conclude that. We could have used the second derivative test to do that. They also intersect at a local min, and they intersect at a couple of saddle points.